Now let's talk about the difference between double-sided and single-sided boundaries. Before, we had a boundary like this. We said on the lower edge we could have alpha over 2, z, the z-score for alpha over 2. Okay, let's pause here for a minute and look. If you look at the z-score right here, remember that z-score is just the number of standard deviations from the mean. So when we multiply it by this sigma over the square root of n, which is the standard deviation from the sample mean, then what that means is that you're just kind of bringing it out of the z domain into the real world. You're getting a numerical value for how far away you are from x bar. The last thing we put to mu is the last thing we put to x bar plus z score alpha over 2 and sigma over the square root n. But what if we took it and we said we don't want to have a boundary that's on either side. What I have up above there is on either side. So we cut off here and here and that's where the alpha over 2 was. There's half of it and there's half of it. But let's just say we, we said well all I know is I want to be 95% certain that our x bar is within is greater than some particular lower confidence boundary or by the same token we can kind of say our x bar is going to be less than some upper confidence bound and this is single-sided. So this thing, let's say that alpha was 5%, 0.05, then actually that whole 0.05 would fall right there. We don't have to worry about the other side. And likewise for our lower confidence bound, lower confidence bound, that would all be alpha is 0.05. So if that's the case, then what we're actually dealing with looks more like, whoops, you're seeing the problem up ahead. Don't look. Okay, We've got x bar minus z alpha sigma square root of m is less than mean. That's that's uh, a one-sided confidence bound. And so for our previous case, if we had, uh, with the Sharpie V-notch, if we had that 95% confidence interval, and we had x bar was 64.46, sigma is equal to 1 joule. Now we would say x bar minus z alpha sigma over square root of n is less than or equal to some mean. And notice we've got an alpha there now. We don't have an alpha over 2. So alpha at 0.05 so with an area of 0.05 so if that was 0.05 right there, right in here. And you can go check it. What you'll find is for point alpha is equal to 0 0.05, the z-score for that is 1.64. Go check it. So then we can write 64.46 minus 1.64, 1 over square root of 10, so that's simple equal to mu. So then our lower confidence boundary is going to be 63.94, which is less than or equal to mu, or the mean. Now, if you look previously, what we had found when we, we had the two-sided mean, then what we had there was, I'm, I'm going to draw that in, I don't know, 
So let's see what color that turns out to be. That two-sided, two-sided was 63.84. So if we're looking at what we had, then you can see that for the two-sided, we have a 63.84. And for the one-sided, that's a little bit bigger, it's a 63.94, so it's like, I'm trying to indicate right there. And that's because that's got the 5% within it, whereas the two-sided only have the 2, 0.025 within it. So that's the slight difference between those two. Now let's go ahead and take a look at problem 8-14 in your book. And it says, the life in hours of a 75 watt light bulb is known to be normally distributed. We, we know our standard deviation. Is that, the sta is that the same as this? No, of course not. They're related to one another, but the standard deviations of the means is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Conveniently, they tell us what n is, 20 volts. And we know what the mean, oops, I forgot to put that there. There should be a whole bar across there. The, uh, the mean life of the bulbs is 10 or 1,014 hours. So first they want us to construct a 95% two-sided confidence interval and they cleverly contrast this with a 95% one-sided lower confidence bound on the mean life. So and then we're supposed to contrast the two of them. So this is a, a nice straightforward problem. Let's go ahead and work it. So for 95% two-sided confidence interval on the true mean life, we would have, let's see, we've got alpha is equal to 0.05. And now we're doing double-sided, so it'll be z alpha over 2 is equal to z of 0 0.025. That's a little point disappeared there. And we, we've already calculated. We know that that z score has got to be equal to 1.96. And let me prove it to you. We'll go and look. Remember, here's our areas here. The areas under this curve and if we're looking for an area under the curve of 0.025 well let's see if I can my old tired eyes let's see 0.025 okay it's right around here and that's going to be a minus 1.9 uh, let's see I think I want 1.96. So let's gin this closer. Okay, well, gee, this is a little closer. So we'll take this one right here. So this is going to be at uh, minus 1.96. And if you want to, you can go check it out. It's 1.96 on this side. And that would give us actually 0.975 would be less than that. So we've got 1.96 or minus 1.96 and plus 1.96. And now we can write that we're, we're saying this is less than mu, which is less than or equal to, and of course on this side we're going to have uh, oops, x bar plus z alpha over 2, well that's 0.025 sigma the square root of n and we'll move this down a little bit so we can get it better and that'll be, in fact I'm just going to write it all down here because you already have this on your notes of course the mean was 1014 minus 1 1.96 and then it'll be 25 divided by the square root of 20 less than or equal to mean, so less than or equal to 10 
14 plus 1.96, 25 over square root of 20. And that turns out to have a confidence interval, 95% confidence interval of this right here. So we, we've got that worked out. And now we want to have 95% one-sided confidence interval uh, uh, on the mean true life of the 75 volt bulb. And so we'll say that in this case, alpha, that's our unacceptable crap level, is 0 0.05. And now we're just going to calculate the z-score for alpha, because remember we're just doing, oops, one side there, one side. So in this case, it's going to be z-score of alpha, z of 0 0.05, and that is 1.65. We can go up and prove that. Okay, let's find 0 0.05. So that's going to be minus 1.6. Yeah, that's actually a little bit closer. So we'll say minus 1.65. And now we can say that x bar is equal to 10, 14, so minus 25 again, and is still equal to 20, and so we'll say x bar is equal, or oops, sorry, x bar minus z at 0 0.05 sigma over the square root of n is less than or equal to mu. We substitute in um, the mean. Then 1.65, 25 over 20, square root, it's less than or equal to mean. And so we find 1005 is less than or equal to the mean for the one-sided confidence interval. And so in that particular case, we can see it's a little bit higher than it was before. And that's what we would expect because Essentially, uh, the all of the all of the alpha or the the type one probability uh, of error is in the left tail or in the lower bound, and so this ends up being per force a little bit bigger. Now let's go to problem eight sixteen, which is actually a continuation of eight fourteen, and it says here, suppose in the same problem we just worked. We wanted the error in estimating the mean life from the two-sided confidence interval to be five hours at 95% confidence. What sample size should be used? Now, keep in mind that the lower limits and upper limits of our confidence interval are defined by this equation right here. So x bar plus z alpha over 2 sigma over the square root of n. And that means that each time our, our lower limit is this far down and our upper limit is this far up. So that's as far as way, away as we can get. Now, if that's the case, then we can actually, we can take things and we can do just a little bit of rearranging as we had done before. And so that's, that's how far away we can get. In other words, this is like our error. So if we rearrange the error, how far away we can get, something like that, we can say that the, the number that we would need would actually just be z alpha over 2 
and sigma over whatever that error is. And people often get confused when they're taking tests as to what this error actually represents. Remember, it's the magnitude of the distance away from the mean on one side, just the magnitude. So that's what that arrow means, and then we square it. So just using this formula then, we can calculate the answer to this problem. So we would find that it would be, well, we already know the z-score is going to be 1.96, and it will be 25. Plug this in, we get 5. And we square it. And we're going to find 96.04. And that's what our n is equal, but we always have to round up. Round up. And so n would be 97 in that particular case. Now, let's go to problem 817. And in this problem, what we've got is it's the same old problem. We want the total width of the two-sided confidence interval on mean life to be 6 hours at 95% confidence. What sample size should be used? So now what we're going to do is we will set the width, the whole width of the confidence at the interval. Oh, yeah. Let's draw that. There we go. So we want our this thing right here, 95% confidence interval, to be the width to six hours. And we already know that sigma is equal to 25 and z of 0 0.025 is equal to 1.96 and we can solve for n. So the trick to this one is you got to cut it in half. Half of the confidence interval is 3. Count them 3. And we'll set that equal to 1.96 25 divided by the square root of n. And if we flip that around and solve, we can see, well, 49 is equal to 3 square root of n. And then n itself is equal to 49 divided by 3 square, squared is 266.78 ergo here we have n is going to be equal to 267.